Welcome back to Raw News' coverage of the big decision, the election for SU, the SU roles on campus. Um, here we have Luke Shortland, one of the candidates for presidency of the SU. How are you today, Luke? Yeah, I'm not bad, thanks. I'm still a bit bored. I've been stuck indoors for ages, but we're going to get there. Um, so let's just get down to business, I guess. Uh, why did you decide to stand for office this year? Um, so... That's a really good question. Throughout the past four years, you know, I've been involved with the SU. Um, I've uh, I've sat on the Democracy Committee, for example. I've uh, been chairman of my student staff liaison committee uh, of my department. So I feel like I've had lots of experience working both within the SU and um, lobbying for change within the actual university itself. And I felt the best way to make more change happen uh, was to stand for office. I've stood for office before as democracy officer. Uh, I didn't win that, obviously. Um, and I stood for office before uh, to be on the democracy committee, which I uh, won, which is fantastic. And I've done that for two years now. Um, but I think I can bring a lot to this SU. And I think my policies are realistic and my priorities are what students want as well. Okay, well, I guess now you mentioned your uh, priorities. What are your top priorities if you were to be elected? Yeah, so um, I'm standing on the strap line, live, laugh, learn, Luke. Uh, it's a fabulous bit of alliteration there, uh, pretending I'm a boomer or something, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> um, but I've got five big priorities, uh, and they are returning to, online t uh, t returning to offline teaching as soon as possible, uh, but with an online option for those who need it. Returning to social events as soon as we're allowed and not a moment later. A no detriment policy to support our grades. Reopening our library with learning grids in Leamington and Coventry, so people in Leamington haven't got to pay £4.30 for the bus just to go and print off something. Uh, and putting more money in students' pockets uh, with a rent refund for everyone who's not returned to their rooms uh, and, an IT, and reopening the IT support fund, uh, which the university put in place at the beginning of the year and it has since expired um, to stop students uh, taking any money from it. Um, obviously, you've been part of the SU for a long time now. What is one thing you would aim to improve about the SU next year if you were to be elected? I mean, you're making me sound old. Um, I think actually for the last couple of years, it's been a real shame to look at the SU and the officer team and to see sort of almost the bickering and the infighting that's been going on. We saw it this year when there was a Facebook post posted by one of the sabbatical officers in the official freshers page um, it was signed by numerous sabbatical officers uh, and some part-time officers. And it was and this post was calling out their colleagues and naming and shaming them for hosting an in-person pop social. Um, now, the pop social was totally legal. It was uh, held with the rule of six with tables and social distancing and all that kind of thing. Um, but I felt that even if these officers felt that holding the event was wrong. It wasn't professional or right to be posting in the freshers page, calling out their own work colleagues. Um, so I think this, bit, this sort of bickering and infighting has got to end because it means officers are more focused on fighting each other than lobbying for change with the university. So one thing I would do to that end is abolishing slates. They've been put in place for this election uh, and actually the democracy committee wasn't consulted on them at all. Um, and I think it, creating mini political parties for SU elections is not a good way to go about making change or unifying the students' union, because it means that there are two. It means that there will be two or more slates elected to the SU, and people are already elected on different lines, and they won't get on from the very start. That's not the way to run an SU. No, no. Um, on the topic of unification, uh, how would you aim to continue to make campus a more inclusive place for all? That's a really important question. And um, I think one of the things I'd like to do is in my manifesto um, is to bring uh, free sanitary products to every building on campus. And I mean, ideally, I would prefer it if students didn't have to go and ask for them, if there was some kind of like a place, a storeroom where they could go and grab them instead of having to sort of beg or ask for them. I think that'd be a lot better. I think also there was a call for uh, there's a, well, there's apparently a call for gender neutral uh, for gender neutral toilets in every building, but also for sanitary bins in every bathroom on campus. 
And it seems strange to me that the university has taken so long to implement that. Because if you think about it, all it is is a few bins in a few bathrooms. And if the university is taking years to put a few bins into a few bathrooms, then it shows that there's not really much care over what students want because it shows the little amount of effort that they're willing to put in. So I think that's just two of the things that I'd like to put into place. Okay, thank you. And we've sort of finished with the more general questions, so now we'll move on to some more specific topics, starting with obviously the pandemic. So the pandemic has had a massive effect on student mental health, and many feel that Warwick wellbeing is not up to the task for dealing with that. How would you, as a president of the SU, improve Warwick wellbeing? within your role? Well, that's a really good question. And I think one of the first things that's very easy to say is that I would lobby for increased funding. But the issue with that is that knowing Warwick, if you increase the funding for Warwick wellbeing, it'll go into some useless areas sort of, you know, that doesn't actually get the money spent or focused on students. So I think if we do increase the funding, and we should, this money should be put towards the frontline services, the counselling and the and getting students appointments as soon as possible. I also think that um, culturally competent care is needed because it seems strange to me that, uh, you know, women who have an issue with sort of sexual assault um, could, could go to Warwick Wellbeing and the first person they speak to is a man. That doesn't sort of cut right with me. I think that needs to be changed. Um, and I know Tiana did a really good um, campaign on that a couple of years ago. Uh, and I think that does need to be continued because it's definitely a priority within the SU. OK, so uh, keeping with the pandemic, obviously, we've seen um, people not being able to move back into their off campus accommodation and people not being able to look for off campus accommodation for second year because the pandemic has prevented viewings. This could all have be leading to a massive accommodation crisis where people do not have a place to live for their second or third years. Um, what would be your plan to address this? So first of all, you talk about uh, an accommodation crisis that's oncoming, but actually I think there's one that's going to hit sooner than we think because the Warwick Accommodation Service is being wound down. And for many, this was a really easy way to find a house with a landlord they knew they could trust um, in the form of Warwick University itself. Now, this has been, to anybody looking at the Warwick Accommodation Service, it's been obvious for a couple of years that it's been winding down for a while now because the number of properties on this website has fallen. And actually, I drew attention to this last year. Um, and it seems strange to me that the SU have done nothing about it it until now when it's almost certainly too late to save any kind of work accommodation um, and so now work accommodation is going to become nothing more than an advertising service now, um, as president I'd love to lobby for that to be reintroduced um, I'm not sure how successful that would be but I think it's a really important priority um, now I think rent refunds for all those who couldn't return to campus is an absolute must because it seems silly to me that people are paying rent for a room they're not allowed to stay in. And I think that should be extended to all those who are in any kind of university managed accommodation, whether on or off campus. Um, I'm not sure how I would address people staying in accommodation with private landlords because private landlords are a lot more stingy uh, and will probably be a lot more brutal and a lot more likely to go to the courts about it. Um, although I do encourage those withholding rent to continue because um, uh, the worst case scenario, if you're ever called to court, you can just pay the rent then and there. Um, but I think actually, yeah, the accommodation is a really big issue, um, especially with people not being able to view their houses next year. Um, and that definitely needs to be addressed. I know you're basically answering my questions before I've even asked them, but I'll give you the opportunity if you want to elaborate further. How would you support the rent strikers any more than just and then lobbying for a rent refund uh, for on and off campus accommodation? So, yeah, I think it's really important that the SU does support the rent strike as much as possible. And the motion that was passed at ASV recently actually mandates the Students' Union to support the rent strike financially. I think it's really important that we do this um, because actually I, I don't know about other people, but I've seen very few adverts or paid promotions on Facebook or Instagram about the rent strike. Um, so I think this is 
is one of the things that could be immediately fixed. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a member of work accommodation. I'm not a university bigwig, so I can't be doling out the cash anytime soon, um, as much as I'd love to do that. But I would stress the importance to anybody rent striking um, of withholding your rent and continuing to withhold your rent, even though you've had some wins in the form of refunds for a couple of months. Um, not all of the rent strike demands have been met, and therefore it is important that you all continue to withhold your rent because many people withholding their rent is much, 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 much more powerful than one or two people withholding their rent. Mm. Um, so obviously another issue that we've seen a resurgence of in this year in particular is issues of sexual violence. Um, if you were to be elected to presidency of the SU, how would you help combat sexual violence on campus and indeed off campus? Yes, yeah, so I think, again, this is a really important issue and it was drawn attention to a couple of years ago um, with the shame on New York protest um, and the, and the uh, horrific comments made in group chats. Um, so, I mean, I went on that march. It was lovely to see a lot of people, you know, gathering together and agreeing that this sort of thing shouldn't stand on campus. So I think it's really important, first of all, that, as I mentioned earlier, the culturally competent care um, is implemented and that also happens in the case of um, sexual assault victims being able to speak to somebody of the same gender or sexuality uh, as them so for example gay men um, sexual assault is a problem in their community as well um, and so speaking to a gay man when uh, getting counseling or therapy or uh, well-being support for that kind of thing is equally as important as a woman speaking to a woman so I think that's definitely one of the things that needs to be implemented. I also think that the Ask for Angela scheme is a really great scheme and we have it in the SU. Um, but I also think it's really important to expand this to all of the bars and pubs in Levington so that um, anybody who feels uncomfortable is able, is able to go to the counter um, or to ask staff for help and they know that it will be addressed in a discreet and professional way. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Um, one final um, specific issue we need to probably cover is the issue of the climate crisis. What, how would you push for a carbon neutral campus if you were to be elected? Yeah, this is a very difficult question. And actually, um, a couple of years ago, I, I had a meeting with Warwick Sustainability on the phone because I put a Facebook event up called uh, Chuck All of the Cardboard Signs in the Lake. And they took it seriously and I had to spend a two hour phone call convincing them that I wasn't going to do that. Um, so I found that Warwick sustainability in that can be a bit of a, a tricky issue, especially for students to, uh, to talk to because they seem quite set in their ways. Um, I think one of the things I would do uh, for a material change more or less straight away is to massively expand the Keep Cup scheme. Um, I actually spent a year at Monash University in Melbourne. Um, last year and the keep cup scheme was almost a universal thing I don't think anybody ever went to the coffee shop on campus without bringing their own cup because um, the campus coffee shop sold the keep cups uh, and really quite big discounts were offered for those who brought a reusable cup and I think that's one of the things that really is a no-brainer um, because it would immediately encourage students to stop bringing disposable packaging uh, and taking disposable coffee cups from campus. So that's one of the things I do straight away. And I think it's one of the things we can do in the next year. Um, but apart from that, I know that the ASV motions have recently gone through to talk about sustainable investments. Um, and I think that's definitely very important and one thing we should be pursuing. Great, great. Um, just one final question. Uh, just to let people get to know you a bit more. What is your bread oven order? My bread oven order. So I think it's once every year or once every term, they do uh, the Godfather, which is, uh, it's like a sausage and then they cover it with chili beef. Um, and now you're gonna hate me for this, but one of the things I really, really, really love is the bread oven tikka mayo. I don't know what is in that thing, but it is so delicious. And so whatever bread oven order I'm going for, whether I'm going for a meaty one or whether I'm going for a, I don't know, a salmon-y one or a chicken-y one or whatever, I, I ask the people at the counter and I say, put on as much tikka mayo on this thing as you can fit 
And if you think it's too much, put on some more. I promise I'll love you forever. I do not know what is in the Tico Mayo. I think it is crack. Um, but every time you go to the bread oven, ask for Tico Mayo. I promise you will not regret it. Oh, well, I think each to their own on this one. I think. That is rude. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, thank you, Luke. That is the end of the interview. We hope you found uh, Luke's policies um, interesting to hear. And But we do encourage you to watch all the other interviews to find out who was the candidate that works best for you. We also encourage you to vote on the day and definitely fill out Raw News's exit poll just so we can give you the most accurate results as early as possible. Thank you. Across campus, online and on 12.51am. This, this, this is your student radio station.